All right, welcome to the webinar for performing compensation in FCS Express 7. And also what's new in the latest release of FCS Express 7, which came out a few weeks ago in July 2021. Uh, the release number on that is 7.08.0018. And uh, we're going to be covering some of the new functionality and user interface designs uh, with that new release. Uh, keep in mind that everything that we're doing here in this webinar is uh, pretty much applicable for uh, previous versions as well. Things work uh, a little bit better and a little bit different in this new release. But as a little bit as a little bit of an outline for uh, what we're going to be covering today in the next uh, half an hour to 45 minutes is first what's new uh, in that new release of, of FCS Express 7 as it relates to compensation. We have a lot of really great uh, new tools and enhancements to the user interface to make it easier. Uh, we're then going to jump right in with some data. We're going to talk about FCS Express user options and how that relates to performing and using different compensations within FCS Express. Uh, we're going to show you how to utilize compensation from the time of acquisition, essentially automatically reading in the matrix that's defined on your instruments uh, when you're um, working with the data sets. Uh, we're going to also show you uh, how to manually adjust that compensation. And uh, just as a point of reference, we don't necessarily recommend this, right? Manually adjusting your compensation by eye uh, is a little bit of a, a no-no these days, especially with all the great tools um, that are available out there and all the great controls that you can acquire and you know bring to your core facility for performing compensation. Uh, we're going to then dive into the compensations window, how to automatically uh, create your own compensation matrix using single same controls. Uh, we'll talk about doing mixed media compensation and using data specific gates for that. And then kind of round things out by uh, teaching folks how to use these new uh, or semi new N by N compensated plots um, for kind of quality control purposes with your compensation. So to kind of start here with what's new with compensation in this latest release of FCS Express, uh, I think the biggest thing that you're going to notice is everything is pretty much automated and live updating in the software. Um, so this is really cool. I mean, you're going to see that as we move gates and markers and change things about uh, which controls are used, the compensation is going to be updated in real time. So that means if you move a gate um, on one of your controls, everything in the matrix downstream, including our new uh, spillover spreading matrix and cross staining index matrices, all of that's going to be updating. So if you're under, ever, ever kind of wondering, all right, well, what kind of happens if I take the tail of that single same control? How does that impact my compensation? We get live feedback on that now. The compensation interface has also been completely streamlined. Um, really, as soon as you add controls into the interface, uh, all of the control pages are automatically generated. The matrix is already generated. Uh, we try to do our best guess at uh, figuring out what uh, scatter gates you want. Um, so instead of kind of adding things and going through all the steps piecemeal like you've done in previous versions, uh, everything should be filled out for you. So as long as uh, you know your controls are good and your naming on those is good, FCS Express should present everything immediately. Um, <clears throat> I did mention the spillover spreading matrix and the cross staining index. Uh, these are two new metrics to FCS Express that you're going to be provided when you do automatic compensation in the software. So I know these are items that folks have asked for for uh, quite a little while in FCS Express. So they're here, they're accessible. You could start using them today with this release. But also keep in mind that <clears throat> all existing compensations from previous FCS Express releases, all the layouts that you've been using, uh, it's not like you have to recreate the wheel, right? When you come into this new release, you can essentially bring all of those layouts in, all of that data in, and you're just kind of picking up where you left off. So I think one place to start here, uh, coming back to our outline there, is talking about uh, our compensation options in FCS Express and what happens when you bring data into FCS Express. So you can see here I have a, a data file loaded. It's called donor number one panel three. It says uh, compensated after it. I've got a side scatter versus forward scatter plot here, and I've got a CD4 versus CD8. And yeah, we can kind of see that this data looks compensated. But one thing you can always do in FCS Express is you know if that data has been compensated 
or if it's had some sort of compensation applied, because in the title of the plot, we put compensated by default um, in the title of that plot. So that's one kind of quick reference. If you've loaded data, you're not sure if it has compensation applied or not. Um, besides just looking at the data, you're gonna be able to see that it says compensated. And I think the place to start is um, how do we handle compensations when you bring them into the software? And this is defined in the file tab options. So I'm gonna come in here and you're gonna see that um, when we come into the options in the general section, you know, one of the first things that you're gonna see here is the compensation options, right? Um, now the compensation options are gonna allow you to do a few things. One is if you wanna change what appears on those plots when they're compensated. You know, some people hate viewing the word compensated up there and that's fine, right? You could actually remove that from here. This is the suffix for compensated data. So you can change that. If you don't like it appearing, you can delete it. Um, if you wanna have it in there or you wanna call it something else, you can just change something here. And, and any new layouts that you create will be using that uh, in there. The other thing you're gonna notice here is a section that says compensation slash unmixing to use in new layouts, right? So this is the default compensation that we apply to plots uh, in FCS Express. And there's really five options here. Uh, the default option is the FCS file, then compensation on mixing default. So what this means is that if you have data that's been compensated at the time of acquisition, and there's a matrix associated with that, well, FCS Express by default is going to use the FCS file compensation. Now, if FCS Express comes in and it sees that your data file doesn't have a compensation associated with it, then it would use the compensation unmixing default. Now, the compensation unmixing default is something that we would set up in FCS Express using our single sign controls to create a compensation matrix and then telling FCS Express that this is the compensation we want to use for everything going forward. So we're going to show you how to set that up, so you're going to get a little bit better point of reference. Uh, but really the differences here is FCS file, that's the compensation at the time of acquisition. Compensation uh, default, that's something that you'd be setting up within FCS Express as a kind of third party you know, offline compensation. So of course, you know, with our preferences here, we can change this if we know that, you know, we're always going to be doing compensation in FCS Express. We always want to be using that and kind of either ignoring the compensation that came with the FCS file or maybe it didn't exist at all. Um, you can flip that preference and say use that compensation default, right? So if you set up an automatic compensation and you want to use that in a layout kind of over and over and over again uh, for analyzing your data, you can simply switch this preference and then you're just using third party compensation or offline compensation in FCS Express. And then of course, you know, we try and be complete about the preferences that we offer. So if you want to kind of force FCS Express to use an FCS file compensation or a compensation default, you can do that. Or it really, if you have the case where you don't want to use any compensation on your plots by default, of course, there, there's that option in there. So essentially, we're going to be leaving these options at the default now, uh, but when we come back and I talk about the compensation default and you're wondering what the heck that is, well, this is where we define uh, whether to use that or not. <clears throat> So once we have compensation, uh, once we have a data file uh, opened up in FCS Express and you see it says compensated, you might be wondering, okay, well, where is that matrix? How do I get access to that so I can see what that compensation matrix is? So all of our compensation information is stored here in the tools tab, compensation and unmixing, right? So we're gonna be coming back to this a uh, number of times today. Uh, when we click on this, it opens up the compensation in unmixing dialog, and then we can navigate into the window here, and we can view the compensation matrix, right? Uh, we can view the spillover matrix, so, um, you know, the compensation is essentially an inverse of the comp uh, the spillover, I'm sorry, the compensation matrix is essentially a inverse of the spillover matrix, uh, but we can also come in here and look at, you know, some of the options, uh, change that suffix for compensated data, and also if it was a uh, automatic compensation that we had set up, we can come in and change some of those parameters. So again, you can see um, everything associated with this matrix here, and I'm just gonna give you a quick heads up about how to manually adjust compensation. 
And you can see here that we have uh, MFI values set up on this plot. And really the reason for this is there's no reason you should be doing kind of manual tweaks to your compensation. However, if you find yourself in the situation, you have to tweak that, you know, doing MFI matching um, of compensated data is probably a good way to do it. Uh, but for those of you who feel the need to kind of come in and tweak this compensation to kind of move the data around and keep in mind, that's what's happening here, right? When you're changing compensation manually, you are moving the data around uh, without controls but you can come in you can right click on a plot you can uh, hover over compensation and then you can come over here and you can pick and choose uh, the compensation that's been defined uh, for that data file at the time of acquisition you can see here that it says uh, donor number one panel uh, 3001.fcs compensation so again this is the compensation that was set up at the time of acquisition so um, Again, what we're going to do here is we're going to click on this. We'll see here uh, my computer's slowing down a little bit on the GoTo meeting here. We're going to see if it's going to let me uh, click that button. There it comes, right? So I can choose that, and what I'm going to end up getting in FCS Express is this kind of slider bar window that's going to pop up. Right. So if you're doing, um, you know, any of these kind of tweaks to your data, the slider bars, uh, these little icons are going to show you which direction the compensation is going to be moving. Right. And as we do that, you know, the data is kind of moving around and we can place the data wherever it is uh, that we want. But, you know, keep in mind, it's updating over here in the compensation navigator as well. So you get a view of kind of uh, what's happening, what's being changed about that. Uh, you can restore this back to the default. And I think one of the helpful things in FCS Express is you'll notice up here in the compensation navigator, this little icon with the uh, uh, histogram peaks on there. When you have manually changed a compensation, that will turn red. Right, so it gives you some sort of indication that something about this compensation has changed, um, and this is essentially how we do it. But again, I'm going to click restore because uh, I don't like manually uh, updating compensation. It's not really a very good way to kind of work with this. Uh, but again, if you know you needed to update it from over here, you can make those changes uh, directly from this compensation navigator as well. Uh, also, keep in mind undo and redo is going to work for all these as well. Right, so if we want to undo, get our compensation back from the time of acquisition, very simple to do. Okay, so again, you know, there isn't uh, many reasons to be using manual compensation. We know a lot of folks are out there uh, are doing it, uh, but if you have any questions about that, you know, make sure to reach out to our team at support at denovosoftware.com. If you find yourself manually adjusting compensations often, you know, it's a good idea to go speak to uh, some experts in the field, either at your core facility, you can reach out to us to figure out how to get some. Uh, better single sane controls so you can do it more appropriately rather than trying to move things around by eye. So that being said, that's a little bit of my disclaimer on that. Um, I want to jump in and talk about how to do automatic compensation in FCS Express and how these new tools in the automatic compensation wizard work in FCS Express. So to get started creating a new compensation in the software, um, essentially what we're going to do is open up a brand new layout. And this is going to be this layout uh, where we perform and manage our compensation. I'm going to go into the Tools tab and again go into our compensation and our mixing dialog here. And you can see that I have no data files loaded, and that's fine because what we want to do here is load in our single sane controls. And to get our single sane controls into FCS Express, I'm going to click on this little button up here, the big blue plus button, choose compensation, and then our automatic compensation uh, setup is going to appear. So I can give this a name, I can call it, you know, my compensation today. You know, you can put whatever it is you want in there. And what I'm going to do is pick a series of single scene controls. So I'm going to click on the little add data for auto compensation. FCS Express is going to prompt me for a dialog to go and grab some of my data files. So I'm going to pick and choose here. I've got, uh, I think, a five color compensation with a universal negative in here. 
I'm going to click open. But when I do, notice what's going to happen in FCS Express. All of these pages are going to be filled out. We're going to start creating plots. We're going to do all of this stuff automatically, which is a change from the previous release of FCS Express. In the previous release of FCS Express, you'd add the controls, you select your scatter gate parameters, you do this, that, and the other thing. Um, you adjust your gates, and then you click calculate matrices. But what I'm going to kind of show you here real quick is that in this new release of FCS Express, all of our plots, all of our controls have been automatically created, uh, even our spillover spreading and our cross-staining matrix, all of this has been automatically defined and set up for you right? It doesn't mean that we don't need adjustments in here, right? We probably have to come in and make sure our gating positions are correct, that we've you know, reviewed this data, that we have everything as it should be. But by default, in the new release of FCS Express, FCS Express is going to do a much better job than previous releases at automatically figuring out and putting together all this information. So what you have immediately is a compensation matrix as soon as you add your controls, right? So again, just to kind of reiterate, it is good practice. You know, you do have to come in here and make sure the gates and the controls and everything is set correctly. But as long as you have good controls, um, as long as you, you know, or labeling your data files correctly so FCS Express can automatically recognize them. Most of this is gonna work out uh, pretty nicely for you automatically um, when you load your controls in. So what I'm gonna do now is break down a little bit about what these different steps are doing, right? So we see step one, select single same controls. Well, that's what we did. We came in and we told FCS Express where our single same controls are, and FCS Express tries its best to match up the parameter for compensation based on the data file name. Right, so you can see here that for you know FITSI, PC5, uh, PE size 7, APC, you know, all of these we've matched up the name correctly. So as long as you have some sort of uh, information within the file name that indicates the parameter to be used, FCS Express is going to make its best guess about which parameter to use uh, for that control. Now, if FCS Express doesn't guess correctly for some reason, right, it's just a, a software or a robot, so to say, I don't never trust a robot, um, you can come in and you can pick and choose, right? So if it didn't happen to select uh, the FITSI parameter correctly, you can come in and select FITSI, and you can kind of more manually define uh, what these are. But again, as long as you kind of annotate and label your data as best as you can at the time of acquisition, FCS Express is going to do its best to line these up. Now you can see we also have an option here for defining a negative control, right? So um, in this case, FCS Express recognized that there is unstained in the name of the file and it's created a negative control for this. So on every page that we've created here, you can see that there is a positive control and there's a negative control, right? Um, so we've automatically defined uh, these two controls for you. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use internal controls, right? So if I came in and I'll show you kind of how this automatic updating works, it's pretty cool, right? If I grab this negative control and I say remove it, well, FCS Express updates everything across all the pages and all the plots to try and find an internal negative, right? You can see now I have two markers on this particular peak, one for stained and unstained because I don't have an internal negative. Right. But if you did, you'd have one plot, you know, marking the stained and unstained. And if I want to get this kind of unstained control back, I'll just open that up, add it back in. It puts it back in the list. It automatically generates the plots. It automatically tries to determine the positive and negative peaks. And there really isn't too much you need to do. OK. Now, the other thing in step two, you know, kind of moving on from selecting single same controls, is that FCS Express automatically tries to determine some sort of scatter gate for your data, right? You can see here that we tried to create a scatter gate for um, our APC stain control. Maybe I can zoom in here a little bit and a scatter gate for my unstained control. Right. So if FCS Express for some reason, you know, didn't recognize what you want to be using for your scatter gates, you can always come in here and change this. Right. If we wanted to use side scatter H, right, you can see 
that it's going to change all of the plots in the analysis template to use size scatter H, right? Again, this is a big change from our previous release. Uh, we're automatically going to be updating everything in there as you make some sort of selection in the compensation navigator, making everything a little bit easier for you. So again, this is pretty straightforward for selecting scatter gates. Um, one thing I do want to note though, is you can see here that when I look at my positive control, versus my negative control, my unsane control, the gating position isn't really correct for my unsane control, right? And in FCS Express, our gates are universal by default. So if I kind of move this gate, well, then it's not so great for the APC gate up here. If I move it, it's not so great down there. Well, what we do in FCS Express is if you need to change a gate for an individual control or really any individual data file, including when we come back in and we talk about mixed media controls later, you can simply grab that gate. And in the gating tab, there's an option here for data specific gate. And if I were to click that button, it would make this gate specific for that control and it would move independently. But we know that a lot of folks don't like to click on the gate, click on data specific gate and do that for everything, right? So of course, for things like that, there's a shortcut key. If you hold down the shift key, which I'm doing right now, and then adjust that gate, you can see that that little data specific gate button became gray because now it's using a data specific gate for our unsaned control uh, and that information has been applied. Um, the other kind of nice thing here is if I come over and I look at my uh, compensation for this, let me uh, kind of scroll through here and grab this. Again, the compensation was already created automatically, but as you make changes to either that unstained or you make changes to that a single stain, you can kind of see everything flashy in there because the matrix is being recalculated in real time as you move that gate, right? That's how fast FCS Express is. We can move that gate, it's doing that calculation across all the pages, all of our controls, and you're getting that information in real time. And again, that's one of the kind of new functionalities in this latest release is that real time feedback. And again, what you keep in mind is as you're going through, and ensuring that you know all of your controls are correct on all of your pages, um, that that information being reflected within the compensation matrix, within the spillover spreading, within the cross staining, all of that's updating in real time. Now, the third step that we have in here is view errors and warnings, right? So we hope you don't have any errors and warnings, right? But if you do, if there's you know a negative control can't be found, if you're using duplicate uh, single same controls for some reason, if something went wrong, um, this error message uh, window would become red and it would give you some sort of indication about what's wrong and how to go in and fix it. Um, step four here, as we just kind of go through the, the steps here for the, the wizard, is adjust parameters. You can see it's an optional uh, setting here. Now, what adjust parameters allows you to do is essentially if you don't like using um, you know, 1D histograms for defining positive and negative controls, uh, what we can do is we can use positive and negative controls from gates, from 2D plots, from other places in the analysis. So for instance, if I wanted to take the scatter gate on the APC control, maybe drag this out and then change this to the APC A parameter, you can see that I can see my APC positive population here very easily. Now, instead of using the marker here on that histogram, if I wanted to use a two dimensional plot, well, what I can do is I can set up a gate here and I can call this my APC positive. And if I wanted to use the APC positive gate here for my positive control, instead of the marker that's been automatically defined, well, I'm gonna take this gate, I'm gonna drag it over here into the stained column. So keep an eye on this, right? And I drag it in there. And now it's saying that it's using plot 27 for the APC gate, right? And this is plot 27 for the APC gate. It's now using that as the single stain control for my compensation data. Right. So adjust parameters, it's useful for folks that you know want to be using 2D plots. I know a lot of people are just using you know the histograms and the markers, and that's fine, right? It works really great. If we wanted to kind of get this back, right? You could just take that marker, you can apply it back over here, and now you're using that uh, original compensation uh, associated with the plot. Uh, we also have step five in here. It's another kind of optional step. So if you're looking to do some more kind of quality control, if you haven't 
uh, collected single scene controls for certain parameters, but you know you might be using them later on, we can kind of make a best guess at some uh, extra spillover targets that are in there. Again, this is kind of a lesser used functionality. Uh, we do have more information in our manual about this. I won't be covering it in a lot of detail today uh, as we get on here to calculating matrices. Okay. So you can see here that one of the additions, if you're used to using the previous release, it didn't have this recalculate matrix automatically every time something changes, right? And that's that live updating uh, changes to our compensation matrix, right? So again, once you have all of these plots loaded, you're gonna wanna come through, you know, make sure that you look at every page. If you do notice a change to a gate that's needed, that matrix will update. If you wanna move that marker a little bit to see how that impacts the compensation matrix, you get that information. But importantly, you know, go through every control, make sure that the gates are set correctly. You can see that FCS Express does a really great job at trying to auto detect where your negative and positive peaks are. But, you know, there are cases, right? And I, I have this PE sample here that has a very very broad kind of CV uh, around the negative population. And FCS Express kind of saw this little dip in the data and I thought, hey, maybe that's the cutoff point for this. Whereas if you look at this from a scientific perspective, you can see that that's probably the better control to be using. You're grabbing most of that data uh, that's in there in the negative controls. So kind of go in and make sure that that is set correctly. Um, so, you know, again, creating this compensation is pretty straightforward like that. And you're also going to see now that FCS Express will automatically create a spillover spreading matrix page. It has that matrix that's up there. It will create a cross stain index matrix that's in here. And I know we had a, a few questions that came in through the questions and answers box about what is spillover spreading, what is uh, cross staining index. Uh, my colleague on the webinar here, Kay Goosh, has uh, put in some information, uh, kind of links to our website to give you a better explanation of what these quality control tools do, how they work, how the calculations take place. So I do encourage you to kind of go in there. Uh, again, today is more of a, a practical uh, use case of how to perform compensation uh, and how to arrive at these results. Now, I know a lot of folks like to look at spillover spreading matrices and cross staining matrices uh, with some sort of kind of heat mapping to get an idea of, you know, what values are high and what values are low. But keep in mind that these matrices are just utilizing the spreadsheets in FCS Express, which makes this very easy. Because, you know, if you don't want to look at a, um, you know, heat mapping, you don't have to. But if you do, you can simply grab that data and you can apply heat mapping to it, right? So I can apply heat mapping and I can see that, you know, FITSE versus PE has the highest spillover spreading matrix here, right? cross staining index, again, I could grab that data. I can go into the conditional formatting. Maybe I want to use a kind of different color scaling for this one. I can apply that. But hey, keep in mind, if I do a uh, kind of two-page view, and I'll go back to, you know, maybe one of our, our scatter plots here, get this out of the way so we can see everything, we get live updating feedback, even in those cross-staining matrices here, uh, even within the spillover spreading matrix. So if you want to see, you know, how changing those gates around, how grabbing, um, you know, uh, kind of tails or shoulders on curves for your single stain controls are impacting everything, you get that live updating information, that live updating feedback uh, as this is done. Now, kind of to uh, complete you know, compensation here, a lot of folks generally have questions about, well, how do I do mixed media compensation, right? Um, you can kind of see in all of our pages here uh, for this compensation, we have this kind of nice defined little, you know, scatter population here because we're using beads, right? And the beads were uh, successful for this particular compensation in this particular experiment. Uh, but if we wanted to use something like a combination of beads and cells, uh, it's pretty straightforward in the software. Right, so you can see we have a kind of similar setup here in this other layout. We have beads being used for you know the primary uh, gate for most of our populations here. But when we get to this V500A control, um, we can see that we've actually used beads, right? Uh, I'm sorry, we actually use cells. So the kind of scatter distribution here has changed greatly. So again, this just comes back to what I showed you a few minutes ago about kind of moving the gate and making data specific gates. Um, if you want to grab that population, either, you know, click on the gate, 
go into the gating tab and make it the data specific gate or hold down the shift key like I'm doing now to move that gate. You can see that uh, we're now grabbing the cells population. You know, if you grab a little bit less of that or auto fitting on that histogram is gonna update in real time, right? We get better kind of feedback on what's going on there. And now we're using that scatter gate. And if I pull over again, that compensation matrix, uh, again, you know, as you're kind of updating this and moving it around, that matrix is going to update our spillover spreading matrix. Oh, and I, let me change this back to uh, calculate that matrix. I had this turned off um, for this one particular sample. But again, all of that information is going to update. So again, doing mixed media compensation, it's not any different than doing uh, any sort of compensation in FCS Express, right? Um, again, all we're going to do is we're gonna, in our automatic compensation setup, we're gonna load in our controls, whether they be beads, whether they be uh, cells, you can load them in here. FCS Express is gonna do its best job at identifying the scatter parameters, identifying some sort of automatic gate to set on those. But if you do find you need to change that, you know, simply come in, just like we did here, you know, grab that gate, hold down the shift key, move it, to the correct gating position that you need, and FCS Express is gonna do the rest to make that a data specific gate uh, and get that worked out. So, you know, that's kind of the basics of setup here. And again, I think you can see some of the big advantages uh, in the most recent release of FCS Express for really all of this being done automatically, right? It does, again, doesn't mean you can't come in and, you know, trust everything, go in and look at the data, but all of the setup is more or less going to be automatic to put this together. But generally the question becomes, all right, well, I've taken the time, I've done my offline compensation in FCS Express, uh, what do I do? How do I apply that to additional data files for analysis so I use my offline compensation, right? So what we, what I generally recommend here is that we don't do a full analysis within our compensation setup, right? Um, in this layout, uh, what we usually recommend is save this layout as your compensation setup and then open up a new layout to do your analysis. Now, one of the reasons behind that is, you know, we've already created, you can see nine pages in this analysis template uh, for all of our compensation setup, and we wouldn't wanna create another, you know, whole bunch of pages in here for analysis as well, right? So one of the easiest things you can do is you can just save this layout, right? Go in the save, save as, call it today's compensation, and then you have that easily accessible. So if you need to come in here and change something about that compensation in the future, you can call it up and you can change it and then you can use that again. However, if you wanna save this compensation explicitly, save it as a file uh, that you can open up in other layouts and apply to other data files without having to work in the context of all the compensation setup, that's why we have this big kind of disk icon, right? You can click save, We'll call this today's compensation matrix. I'll click save here. And what that's going to do is save a file called today's compensation matrix. And then we can open up another layout in SCS Express and perform all of our analysis using that matrix. So let's take a look at that, all right? I'm gonna open up a new layout, right? And I'm gonna have a kind of fresh and clean, clean layout here. It's all blank. I have just one page. And what I'm gonna do in this layout is just open up my all color control. I'm gonna pull this in. I'm gonna say, give me a density plot for that data. And you can see that I've got my data file here. And I'm gonna do something very simple in analysis. I'm just gonna look at forward uh, versus side scatter. I'm gonna create a gate. I'm going to drag that gate out. I'm gonna open it up over here and we'll just look at something like, you know, CD4 versus CD8, okay? Now, again, when I get started in this analysis template uh, and I know that I wanna use an offline compensation or, you know, even if I'm not sure, I'm gonna come up here to the tools tab and choose compensation and I'm mixing. And you can see that we've loaded up that compensation that was performed at the time of acquisition. Right, so when we had that setting set up, it said FCS file, then compensation default. Well, it's pulling in the FCS file. So how do we pull in that compensation that we just created? Well, you can imagine we have a little load or import uh, compensation transformation icon here. And what we're gonna do is go over and get that file that we uh, just created. This is the compensation matrix. We're gonna click open. 
and you can see that this is the compensation that we had set up in the other layout. We have the compensation matrix, we have the spillover matrix, we have everything that we need to perform this analysis. But how do we get this applied, right? So there's a few ways to kind of apply compensations. So one is if you have multiple compensations available to you, you can simply just highlight that compensation and say apply to all plots, right? You can kind of see here that this data changed around, right? So I tried to set up a compensation where it would be a little bit obvious here in the CD4 versus CD8 uh, that it's shifting around a little bit. But if I want to get back and use uh, that kind of compensation that came with a data file, right, I can just kind of pick and choose and do that. Um, now, the other thing that we can do is that default compensation step, right? So again, kind of coming back to the beginning of the webinar when I talked about how you can change those preferences and you can set up a layout to automatically use a compensation every time that you uh, perform an analysis there. Well, you can right click on this compensation and there's that set as default button, right? So if I choose set as default, and I go into my FCS Express preferences and I say, always use the compensation default and then the FCS file, or just always use the compensation default and ignore the FCS file. Well, anytime I load data files into my data list and I bring them into this analysis template, regardless if there's a compensation um, associated with the data file, FCS Express will use the offline compensation file that we loaded and that we created. So again, what you can imagine here is if you're doing kind of just solely offline compensation, you load your controls into a layout, you perform compensation, you save that compensation file, you load that into this new layout for analysis, and then any analysis that you perform in this new layout is going to be compensated uh, based off of this offline compensation. Now, I know you saw me kind of changing compensations here, you know, between um, uh, acquisition defined and then offline defined, but don't feel like you're limited. We know a lot of folks like to compare compensations, uh, you know, looking at what was acquired at the time of acquisition versus third party compensation versus even no compensation, right? So, what we can do in FCS Express is we can grab those files, you know, as they came in, you know, we copy and paste them, right? Put them right down here. I can maybe paste another version of that. I'll kind of put these down here. Because what we can do is we can come in and say, all right, for the second set of data, you know, maybe just apply that compensation that we created uh, offline to that set of data, right? Now we're comparing the uh, acquisition-derived compensation to our offline compensation. And we can kind of even take that a step further if we want to fully remove compensation from a set of data files. It's done in a little bit slightly different way. We come up into the format and the overlays, but we can say that for these two plots, set the compensation to none, right? So here's what that data file looks like uncompensated. Here's what it looks like with the compensation that we created at the time of acquisition. And then here's the compensation from uh, when we did it uh, offline and a third party piece of software. Okay, so again, there's a lot of kind of different options and functionality here. There's also a lot of drag and drop. If we want to drag and drop a compensation to get it applied to a plot, right? We don't just have to grab that plot and say apply to the selected plots. You can even just kind of drag in and drop it into there. So again, that kind of gets you through uh, creating the compensation uh, in FCS Express, applying that compensation in a few different ways. And I know one of the last things I like to uh, follow up with here is how do we perform uh, an end by end kind of comparison of all of the compensated parameters, right? So I'm gonna kind of jump back to this example layout. And you can see I have a page here labeled end by end, right? And in this end by end layout, we have all of uh, the histograms for individual uh, channels. Uh, we have a data file here that's showing CD8 versus you know, all the different uh, iterations or parameters that we define CD27, right? So we define this matrix here for essentially quality control purposes. We can come in here and make sure that everything's been compensated uh, and that compensation is accurate for everything. But how do we set that up, right? And we make it very easy. You know, essentially if you have a plot created, um, you know, especially if you have a plot created with some gates on it, it becomes very useful because uh, FCS Express, when it creates these N by N plots compensated, it will retain that formatting, right? So if you had some gates set up, you had some coloring associated with these things, 
uh, what we can do is click on the multi-plot tab and we can choose this option for n by n compensated right fcs express is going to prompt you with you know which parameters you want to include so you know if you don't want to include scatter you don't want to include everything in here you can pick and choose but when you click ok fcs express is going to kind of create a matrix of those plots right again with our single stains up here as histograms all of our iterations versus each other this is a group of data that you can move around and kind of like what we did on the separate page i'll just kind of put this over here for now uh, what we can do is just put that on its own page right and then we can come in we can quickly look at this we can kind of see what's going on um, then again you know if we came in and we made you know some sort of change to this compensation right we can see how that's actually updating across that matrix there of n by n compensated plots. And you might be wondering, all right, well, why are the backgrounds changing on some of these, right? You know, as I kind of move this around, uh, the backgrounds are highlighting to kind of different colors, right? So let me restore this and go back into our, our tools and our matrix again. Um, you yeah, know, what we do in FCS Express is in the compensation matrix, in the spillover matrix, we're going to be kind of highlighting, um, you know, the different, um, you know, kind of giving some uh, heat mapping to these different parameters uh, of interest. So, you know, if I were to come in here and I were to change, you know, one of these values to one, and another value to one, just to really kind of quickly highlight this, right? They become red because those values are very high, right? If I change this to minus one, and I change this one to minus one, those values become, or those uh, highlights there and over here on the plots become blue because they're very negative, right? So we're going to try and give you some sort of indication um, about you know what's going on with the compensation, some sort of warning. Uh, as you may know, compensations over you know one or over 100%. It's not necessarily wrong depending on the system that you're working on, but we'll try and give you some sort of indication um, that the values are higher or lower, you know, inside or outside of a particular range. So with that, I kind of wanted to wrap up here a little bit and um, uh, give a, a little bit of a conclusion uh, to this. So what you can see is that what we do in FCS Express is that the compensation is built to be flexible and versatile based on your data and your workflow. Right. So if you're doing compensation at the time of acquisition, you didn't bring the data in, it's compensated. Right. If you're doing uh, offline compensation, you can set up a compensation in the software. You can save that, apply it to a new layout and use that by default over and over again. And if you're in a kind of in between mode, right, you can use either or or both. Right. You can do your comparison side by side. Now, in the latest release of FCS Express, we have these enhanced features and workflow to make it faster and easier to create a matrix uh, specific for your data with that live updating feedback. And I know as scientists, a lot of us really love to have that ability to get that live updating feedback. You know, we'll see what's going on if we select the tail of the control, what happens if we, you know, just select the really high portion of the MFI, the really low portion, and you get that live updating feedback about how those gating changes are actually impacting the matrix as a whole and impacting things like the spillover spreading and the cross seeding index uh, that are also new in the software and that are provided for you there. Uh, the data specific gates are going to allow you to optimize your experience when using mixed media controls right if you have a different gating position hold down the shift key and move the gate right it's very simple very easy if you have um, you know some of the different gated populations that need to be moved around even with you know bead controls hold down that shift key move the gate simple as that and kind of finally, if you need those N by N compensated plots to get a quick way to visualize that data, to get a quick way to kind of do some quality control, right? Again, you select a plot, it's gonna be in the multi-plot uh, tool there. We have the dedicated multi-plot functionality for N by N plots compensated. So with that, you know, if you haven't used FCS Express before, you can download a free 30-day demo at the DeNovo software website. Uh, if you're currently using the software, uh, you can update to this new uh, functionality, to this new uh, feature. It's provided as part of your subscription, so don't worry, you don't have to buy something new. Even if you're on a site license, you can update to that. And most importantly, if you have any questions, 
email us at support at denovosoftware.com. Uh, we love hearing from our customers. We love supporting them. Uh, we don't get ideas for, you know, putting together a great new functionality like this just from within ourselves. Uh, this new release with the live updating compensation, the spillover spreading matrix, the cross-seeding index, I mean, all of this is, you know, based off of years of input from our customers, um, you know, representing site licenses and biopharma industry and folks all over the world uh, for many, many years. So, you know, come to us with your questions, come to us with your comments, uh, come to us with your ideas, and we'll make sure that we help you turn that cytometry data into results. So thanks again for joining us on the webinar. Uh, we'll take a moment to review a few of the questions that came in to see if there's anything we can answer. And uh, we hope to see you at our next series of webinars coming up later this week and in the future. Thanks.